Hello traders, this is Corey Mitchell with TradeThatSwing.com and I want to do a video on how to create your own strategies. I'm going to try to make this super quick because it is not a complicated process. People ask me all the time, well what happens if your strategy goes away? I can almost care less because I know how to create strategies and I could create a new one almost every day. Uh, simply by looking at the chart, looking at how price is moving and saying, okay, how do we take advantage of this? So we'll go through a couple quick examples of how to do it, some things to look for. So the other day, I've used this indicator before for some other strategies I use as a trailing stop loss in some of my swing trades. And it's just, it's similar to a moving average. But you can see it looks a little bit different in that the price kind of stays below it or above it. And it's an average true range indicator. So at any given moment, it's just saying if the price has moved up a certain amount, we are in an up, sort of an uptrend or we're, we're above the green. And you can find this on TradingView uh, if you just add uh, indicators. It's under, just so you know what I'm talking about. It's this guy, uh, H. Potter has a great one, average true range, trailing stops, color, or strategy, it doesn't really matter. And so I have this set to two, and how did I determine that? Well, I just looked at, I ran through a few different settings, and just kind of said like, which one, this one maybe gives a little bit too much room, uh, you know, the price reverses, and you know, in this case, it kept going down, so, we probably could have got out a little sooner. So two seem pretty good. I tried out 1.5. That's also not a bad one. I use that on some. Uh, yeah, you know, it tracks the price maybe a little too close, um, but also an option. So you could try out a few different uh, settings, but just kind of start somewhere. Just pick a pick some settings. If you're using an indicator, we'll also go through a price and action example. Uh, just pick some settings that look like they capture the price moves decently. Again, this, we're right at the start of developing a strategy. It doesn't need to be perfect yet. There's lots of time to fine tune. We just want to see if the overall concept is relatively profitable. So you're going to pick something, pick your idea. Then you as a person are likely only going to be able to trade at a certain time of day or place trades at a certain time of day. So that's something you also want to consider. Uh, you can see I have a whole bunch of notes on here because this is my day trading chart. I day trade the Euro USD with some other strategies that we'll talk about. I'll show you how I develop those. And so we, we want to pick a time of day that we usually trade. I'm usually trading between about six and uh, 8 a.m. my own time. That's 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern. 8, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. East. Did I say p.m. again? A.m. Eastern time. So in the morning, Eastern time, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Eastern, 6 to 8 my time. And that would basically be my window. So I don't really care about what the indicators do at other points in time. I'm gonna focus on when I'm trading. Same if you're swing trading or anything, you're gonna look at uh, the time frame that you're most interested in. Uh, so I'm looking at the one minute chart here for a day trading strategy. And again, this could very easily be a daily chart as well. And you're just looking for the signals on the daily chart or the hourly chart or the four hour chart doesn't really matter but again if you're if you're going intraday just remember that you're probably not going to be able to trade the entire 24 hour period or the maybe the entire time the stock market's open so only kind of look at where you would actually be able to trade so i'm going to look through this time from 6 till 8 my time or 8 to 10 a.m. eastern time and i'm first just going to look how does this indicator just do on its own racking up the pips? So what I would do is I, I like to do everything manually because I want to see all these charts because in a way, if I end up liking the strategy, if I go through 20 charts like this, it's like I've already practiced a whole bunch of trades. So if I do decide to implement this with live, I've already gone through a whole bunch of examples. My mind's pretty keen on where you know how to how to place it 
So I'll just have a little notepad. And what I'll do is, this is a 4x chart, and I'll just look for where the entry signals are. So the first one after 6 o'clock, we need the move above this uh, signal. So this would have been the first one here. So it's always the first candle after the uh, indicator reverses. So from there, and then I, I was thinking for this strategy. I have not tested this out yet. So I'm basically doing this with you just to get the general idea of if I think this is a viable thing to follow through with and test further and refine, or if I should just scrap the idea altogether. So I was thinking the first close, because what can happen, like on this bar, it spiked above it, but it ended up closing back below it. So in hindsight, when I'm looking back at my charts, I wanna be I'll always know like, okay, I made that trade at the right time. Uh, you can maybe change it where if it if it touches the line, you open it or close it. So you wanna decide on your entry rule. So I'm basically saying I need a close that flips the indicator to enter a position and then I need a closing price that flips the indicator to get out of the position. So in and out, I need a closing candle. So that means this one was the one that flipped it, it closed, so I'm gonna enter right at the end of that candle or near the beginning of this next one. And same thing on the reverse. This one didn't close it. This is the one that actually flipped the indicator. Because in real time, you know, we gotta think about if we're trading in real time, that indicator is still green. We haven't dropped below it. We did drop below it, but we haven't had a close below it. And again, you could change that later and say, anytime it crosses the indicator, I'm gonna get in or out. So, but that's gonna make it a little more confusing, I think, that's why I opted for this. So there, and then I would just write down, okay, I made about five pips on that one. So I'd write down five pip winner, or plus five, and then we go to the next one. So this is, an, this is a system where you're basically always gonna be in trades, and so we're going short here. This is the first point where the indicator flipped, and we're holding short until it flips above, Okay, that one's a loser, so we lose about uh, 3.7 pips there. If you, if you have a spread, you'd want to include that as well. You'd probably end up, you know, have, if you have a half pip spread, instead of only losing 3.7, you'd actually probably be losing 4.2, something like that. And then we go long, and we get smoke there. Another, uh, we lose 8 pips. We go short. And that one doesn't really work out as well. We lose uh, four pips there. But then we get a nice run here, and we make back six pips, and then we just keep going. So that signal, and that's good till, ooh, I got some writing in the way there. But we make uh, two pips there. And we just keep going like this, adding up, writing each one down, and Sometimes you'll have a couple losses in a row and you think, oh, this strategy's crap, but I, I would say write them down. Go through at least 10 days like this because we're then gonna go through how to refine it and make it better. So we did that for one day. We just add up our profits and losses on a simple strategy. Again, this could be any idea that you've come up with. One thing I also do is uh, at least for this, if you're day trading, I like to scale my axis to about um, just whatever kind of fills the chart a little bit. And then that way, when you scroll from day to day, you get an idea of how much the price was moving. So if we go back here, so I have this scaled to about set, or just be aware of the scale you have set. So I've manually set this to about 75 pips. You can see I have uh, 8, 9, 5 at the top, and so that's 75 pips, approximately. You can also use the measuring tool to just go from the bottom of your chart to your top. Okay, so 80 pips. It's scaled to 80 pips right now. So when I'm looking at my day, I can see like, okay, this day was actually pretty calm, choppy, it didn't really trend a whole lot while I was doing my little test. So that gives me, I just wanna keep that in the back of my mind. 
So we go to the next day that we're gonna test. This was, you know, the prior day to that. And we start to notice, ooh, maybe a little more movement. So we do the same thing again. We're gonna test from six till eight, uh, or however, wanted, however long you want it to go, six to nine, you know, whatever hours you're training. And you're just gonna do it again. Use the measuring tool. Okay, we lost pretty much break even, maybe one pip there. So right down, you lost one pip, uh, and then we lost two pips there, three pips, and you'd want to be precise. I'm just trying to rush through this so that we don't uh, take up too much time. And this one, nice big runner, first daily or first candle close is way up there, so we make 24 pips on that one. Then we are going short here, first candle close above, we make three pips there. Then we're going long here, first close below there. We make 19 pips there. So we can already see this day is looking a little bit better. And you also want to keep in the back of your mind, what's the overall daylight? The last day was kind of choppy sideways. This day's more trending. It's obviously gonna work better for this type of strategy. So we're just gonna keep that on the back burner right now, but just keep going through the charts and adding up the profits and losses. After you go through about 10 days of this, and that's why I said also just be aware of what kind of days they were, you wanna have a sample where you have some choppy trading, you have some trending days, and yeah, maybe some low movement days, some high movement days. That's gonna give you a decent sample, this again for day trading of how the strategy works under different conditions. This is just giving you a very basic baseline of whether your idea has some viability or not. Even if you come out and you add up all your profits and losses and maybe it's only a tiny bit profitable or it's a tiny bit of a loss, that doesn't mean your idea is totally bunk. What we can do then is start to refine. So we can look at What's overall movement? How is the overall price moving? This indicator is not going to do well in periods like this, right? You have extremely low movement. So then maybe we add in a qualifier and say, before I take a trade, the price needs to have moved, if it's 4x, maybe it's need, had to have moved at least 15 pips in the last hour. That's a qualifier, and it says we don't take trades unless there's at least 15 pips of movement in the last hour. If you're day trading stocks, which you know open at a specific time, maybe you require a certain amount of movement in the first two minutes or the first five minutes of the day. If there's enough movement there, then you'll take that trade. If you're swing trading stocks, maybe you look for a certain amount of movement over the last week, the last month, before you consider taking a trade just so that like with this type of strategy just so that you don't get stuck in these super dull conditions where even just by looking at two days and seeing some of the price action we could maybe get chopped up a little bit if we get this really sideways action a little bit more like we did on the prior day obviously this works really well when the price is running we have some big profits and so this strategy looks viable under certain conditions. So already, after only two days, I'm, my, my wheels are starting to turn and I'm starting to come up with some qualifiers, let's call them, where we'd want to trade this under certain conditions, but if we have super low movement, maybe only moving you know, 10, five to 10 pips in the last hour or so, then we would just hang out, not trade until. So that might mean we actually miss out on this trade but we do capture this one, and then we capture this one, and then we capture this one, but we would have missed that first one, just because it kind of jumped out of the gate. The nice thing is, is that even though we missed this one, we missed all these losing trades in here, which at least look like losing trades. We would have gone uh, long there, uh, ended up you know, getting out here, going short there, getting out up there, right? This is very tight, just it's not really following through. So that's, the process. Then you just come up with qualifiers, and then you might want to test a, tr a, a few variations, where, like I said, you get out as soon as the price touches the line. Does that work out better? In this case, it would have. But instead of just guessing, 
go through the same 10 days with slightly different entry rules saying, okay, if the price just touches the line, I'm going to flip my position. And then you'd have to figure out how you're you know, going to exit. You can try out some different rules. I do not believe in testing, because I'm doing it manually and I get to see and absorb all this information, I'm not a believer in testing thousands of trades with a strategy because if I'm going through the last 10 days worth of charts, maybe this strategy works great right now. And then going through all these charts, I know the conditions where it doesn't seem to work. So as soon as those conditions where it stops working develop, or, or come about, again, I can just stop using this strategy and wait till the good conditions again and then start employing it then. In the meantime, I can develop other strategies. Like I said, I am never worried about whether one of my strategies becomes unprofitable because I know how to go through this process to tweak it, look at why are my losses happening, what conditions are present when I'm taking these losses how can I try to compensate? As long as there's movement in the market, we can profit. So I think that's one of the mentality shifts from people who are like just so tied to like one little thing, whereas, you know, successful traders, uh, at least who last a long time, I've known some great traders who lasted a tiny while trading one line of little thing, but they didn't know how to adapt when that strategy no longer worked as well. So you want to develop this skill set if you want to do trading for, you know, as a career potentially or for the long term. Again, most strategies, the ones I've been using, have been working for years and years and years. But, you know, it's always nice to have some strategies on the back burner. Also, it allows you to fill in holes. Uh, I'm Another one I'm working on is I don't swing trade through earnings. I don't like holding through earnings, so I'm developing strategies where you know I can take trades right after earnings, and I'm I'm testing out that right now. So that just looks at I develop some qualifiers. I'm saying okay, this has to happen with earnings. Maybe like a these are the things I'm looking for. At least a 20% jump on the earnings announcement, and then I decide on what kind of setup I'm looking for. And then I'm also looking at things like, what was the volume on that day? Was it just normal? Was it the biggest volume of the year? Was it the biggest volume ever? And then how was when the stock jumped on that earnings day? Did it finish near the close? Did it finish kind of halfway? You know, so went up a lot, but then uh, came back down and closed the day in the middle? Or did it close near its lows? And I'm looking at those kind of things. How does that thing how do those qualifiers affect the performance that follows once my pattern develops? So, you know, I'm looking through loads and loads of examples like that and doing the exact same thing. I'm adding up all the profits, adding up all the losses, and then I can go through all those same charts again with maybe a few different rules to see how it works out. And then you have actually written down like, okay, I would have made like 40% on the last, you know, 40 trades or whatever it is, and you know, or the last 20 trades, last 10 trades, you know what to kind of expect, and you've got this picture. So that would be the same thing. You'd keep going through day after day at the time of day that you trade, or uh, if you're a swing trader, I like to qualify based on overall market conditions. So I have some indicators actually every day. Uh, each week I update, I have a stock market outlook, which basically says what I'm doing based on uh, a few indicators that I look at. So th this just tells me market health and it tells me whether I'm gonna take any long swing trades at all or if I wanna be shorting. And you can see, so even just scrolling through these charts, you can see this this type of strategy would not work well during this. This is also why I don't like some automated software because it's just going to run through every uh, candle. Whereas I only want to run through very specific times of day when I'm actually trading. Another thing, another qualifier, another thing they're going to be want to take be aware of is if you have news out. This is more for day trading. If you have big news announcements coming out during your trades, I'm more likely to close the trade right before. That is going to affect performance. That means you're going to be closing some trades a little earlier than the 
base signal would imply and then you might actually miss a trade after so uh, it's nice to have these on the chart trading view settings events economic events on charts if you're very new to trading you might need to look up whether this was an important event I would step aside for definitely for high impact news events they're usually marked with like three stars or you know in red or something like that that means they're market moving events and for short-term trades I'll usually step aside before those close on my positions just because you could have a big move which gaps and so yeah that's something you'd also want to consider maybe you don't maybe you run through all your scans including news you don't make any adjustments and you find it works out just fine because sometimes yeah you might take a hit on a big news but other times it might go in your favor so you know you can run through both scenarios again that would be like the qualifier type thing you go through testing for news and then you go through uh, not testing and see which one you like better once you go to live trading as well let's say you run through 10 charts of this and you say yes this is actually quite a profitable idea with the few qualifiers I've put in let's say there needs to be at least 10 15 pips of movement something like that then you can go to live trading and things are gonna come up during live trading that maybe we didn't see on our charts and you're, you're still in the early stages just refine that strategy a bit come up with new rules uh, to adjust for that circumstance fill in any holes if you have a if you start questioning something while you're in trades that it's like oh what am I supposed to do in this situation that means there's a hole in the strategy that you need to fill in so just come up with a rule look at the charts again go through several days of examples or if you're looking at swing trades uh, look find some other examples and then come up with a rule for how you're going to handle that situation that you're concerned about uh, let's briefly look at another one so I have a strategy called the trend continuation and this was basically developed just by you look at when there is sharp moves so usually the very first sharp move we may not be able to get into because if the price was just you know move, like I was talking on the on the last day the price was just chopping around then all of a sudden there's a huge move we don't know when that's gonna happen maybe you could find a strategy that finds that I think that's maybe a bit of a waste of time instead once you have that big move what happens after that where's the profit so the TC or trend continuation was simply once we have a decent size move within a trend or when a trend reverses what tends to follow it so there was this big move uh, and then I started looking at okay the pullbacks or little consolidations that occur so we had a big drop how can I trade this and I basically just came up with the idea of well if we start having a pullback and the price drops below it I'll just put a stop loss above the pullback and enter below and then you start looking at well how far does price typically run does this move generally affect it usually it does in this case it didn't big move this one was followed by a very tiny move usually they're a little bit more symmetrical but this day also pretty quiet so that's the qualifier again something we'd maybe want to look at so if you have an overall low movement day maybe you add in a trailing stop loss on the trade whereas if you have really big movement like we did on the other day that we looked at with this strategy where we had those big up and down moves then maybe you just let the trades play out so again maybe you have that qualifier of how much has the price moved in the last hour if it's over 15 pips maybe we let it run out if it's over 20 pips we let it run out whatever your qualifier is and that's the process again and you can see just by looking at the chart I was looking at charts and just saying like this generally seems to be pretty good if you have a sharp move followed by a pullback it tends to run so just by looking at the chart this strategy just kind of pops out and I'm like I can see it works but how do I actually make it profitable or let me rephrase that I can see there's lots of trades that work but how do I make it profitable control my risk all that so I had to come up with a way to enter the trades and I'm entering just when the price moves above a 
So if it's a long trade, we had this pop, the price pulls back. I'm entering on the first, the first time the price moves above a candle high. So you can see this one drops. This is the start of the pullback. This candle is still part of the pullback. And this green candle is the first time the price moves above that candle high. So I'm entering as soon as that happens. Stop loss goes below. In this case, you know, it doesn't always end up exactly. I'm putting, you know, I'm punching in my stop loss, position size, all that. So it doesn't always end up exact. But theoretically, this uh, should be right there, uh, just below that low. And I'm going to put out a target at, usually it is 2, 2, 1. Again, my stop loss was smaller, so I did have it at two to one. Uh, so something like that, you'd want to decide where am I gonna exit? So this was more of a price action strategy just based on risk and reward. Whatever my stop loss size is, I'm gonna double that and that's gonna be my profit target. And then, again, you might wanna add in some little rules. You find, you start to see some of these where they reverse. Do I have rules where I'm allowed to get out early? In my case, if the price gets really close to the target and doesn't quite hit it, I'm allowed to just close out the trade uh, after at least you know a certain amount of time, whatever you come up with. And same thing here. Some of these you know get really close to the target, just didn't quite hit it, so I closed it out. So those are little rules you could add in later. So again, you might add up just looking for this pattern, you might add up all the signals and say, yeah, that wasn't really profitable. Like I'm break even or maybe we didn't came up as losses. As a loss, when you add up 50 trades or all the trades over the last 10 days, but then you go through and you refine it and you just say, how can I make this better? And then you start to notice things where, uh, you know, on this one, we were coming into these prior lows. Does that affect the type of trades. It didn't really seem to affect this one here. It just blew right through it. But I actually do have a rule that says if the price approaches these prior highs and gets rejected, I'm allowed to close out the trade. So if this got near these levels and then started to turn, this is somewhat of a, you know, suspect area. The price has been rejected here before. So it might pop through or it might turn lower. So if this got up to here and then turned lower, I'm, I'm allowed to close out that trade. That's like a, that's a fine tuning element of the strategy, and same with on this one. We and that's basically what I did. We got close to here, and it just didn't seem to want to go past these prior lows. So I, I'm allowed to close out the trade. So you can add in these little rules to help make the performance better. Then you go through the last 10 days or the last 50 trades, if you're swing trading, whatever it is, 30 trades, and implement this new rule so you say okay if and it can even be if you're like unsure because you're in the early stages of a strategy you have a lot of time to fine-tune this if there are levels you're just not sure what to do then just incorporate an element such as a trailing stop loss or uh, closing out the trade if it gets near prior highs or lows, something like that. It's your strategy, you're allowed to do this, and then you can test it out. You can add up all the profits and losses and see if it is profitable. Then, you know, this really only should take about maybe an hour, uh, just going through like 10 charts. Uh, then the refining stage, maybe spend another hour or two, and you have a pretty good idea of whether you have a good strategy. It does not require years of research and thousands of trades uh, because, yeah, you're going to have an idea of that this, if this works and you should also have an idea of what conditions it works under and that's going to be part of your strategy when you write it down. You say, I traded under these conditions. It doesn't seem to work so well under these conditions. So when those conditions come up, I'm just going to stop trading this strategy and I'll wait till the good conditions come up again. And then you can have several different strategies. That's how I ended up trading multiple strategies is I liked I liked this. This kind of captures in the middle of a trend. You know, this is the, more the start of this downtrend and I get a little bit of the next wave. This is the start of the uptrend. I get a little chunk of it as the price continues higher. 
And then I also have a reversal strategy. So a reversal pattern, basically this actually, this rounded bottom here. Uh, this actually ended up being this, pretty much the same signal because that was the first time we got a move up and then a pullback. But I'm look, I have a reversal strategy. I have these ones that capture the middle of the trend. And like I talked about with swing trading, I have lots of things to capture kind of movement in the trend. I miss stuff around earnings because I don't hold through the earnings and then my setups don't really occur right after. So I had to find something a little bit shorter term that I can implement right after earnings. So I'm basically filling in the holes with strategies where my current strategies don't really work. And then this way you can keep building your income through different market conditions. So you, you have one that maybe works in quiet market conditions. You have one that works in volatile market conditions. You have one that works in trending conditions. You have one that works in ranging conditions. I'm not saying you need to have all of these. I'm just saying you could build these out so that basically no matter what trending conditions or no matter what conditions are, you have uh, something to take advantage. And I haven't done this for all market conditions. I've basically picked which kind of conditions I want to trade in for my strategies, and I basically stick to that. And if it's if it's not present, I don't trade uh, because really low movement I find hard to trade. Uh, as retail traders, you're you know you're just not going to get the best prices, the best information, everything. So it's going to be hard to just kind of scalp out tiny profits. Maybe you pay commissions, you pay spreads. Uh, so in really low movement, you're kind of up against the wall, but in trending, ranging, all these other types of conditions, other than extremely low movement, you have the ability to profit and you can build strategies catered to those conditions. So this ended up being a little bit longer than I wanted because I wanted to show that it's actually a simple process, uh, but hopefully you got something out of this and you know ask your questions below the video if you need but really it comes down to you and that you have the ability to go to your charts and not have to rely on someone else because the charts can answer all your questions what do i do when the price approaches a prior high or low Look at your chart. The charts tell you, you can test out different variations. Do I get out? Do I let it run? Find 50 examples and write down the profits and losses on them, which one works out better. And you'll have a definitive answer of which one produces more profit for you. You do not have to rely on someone else. Pro traders do not go to other pro traders and ask them, how they should approach a certain condition. You just don't see that. I, I, I've never asked someone, how, how do I uh, trade this indicator? How do I trade this thing? I go to my chart and I figure it out and I look at what's most profitable and I look at variations and qualifiers and which entry rules seem to work better. Yeah, it takes a bit of work. But I can tell you, it's a lot quicker. A few hours of dedicated work, and you can have a great strategy where you could spend months and months and months just reading other people's work and just asking questions and never quite getting the right answer you want when you could just take their idea, go to your chart, find the answers yourself, or just create something totally from scratch that's totally yours, go through many charts, and you'll also have the confidence because you've seen it work. You know you've written down exactly all these winners and losers. You know kind of how many winners you tend to have in a row, how many losers you have in a row. Uh, yeah, you have a whole bunch of insights that you're just not going to get if you're always asking someone else how they do something. And I think that you really start cutting the apron strings and you become your own trader as opposed to always just being trying to copy someone else and always feeling somewhat reliant on them I do not want people to be reliant on me I want people even if they're using my strategies to learn this process of just looking at your charts for the answers because you can add them up 
you can add up profits, losses. So I hope now you feel you have at least somewhat of that skill set to start doing it. And yeah, uh, I hope that helps you out. And until next time, happy trading.